Welcome to today's deep dive, where we're going to be uh, taking a look at a pretty uh, fascinating and unsettling aspect of human nature. It's the potential for people who we think of as good, you know, seemingly good people mm -hmm. to turn evil when they're put in certain situations. So to understand this transformation, we're going to use the Stanford prison experiment and the idea of the Lucifer effect as our framework. Yeah, the Stanford Prison Experiment, which was done in 1971 at Stanford University, really, I think, gives a powerful illustration of this whole phenomenon. Right. In this experiment, you had a group of college students, all of whom were psychologically healthy, and they were randomly assigned to be either guards or prisoners in this simulated prison. And the researchers really tried to make the experience as realistic as possible. So, like, the prisoners were actually arrested at their homes. They brought them to a mock prison in the basement of Jordan Hall. Uh, they were strip searched, they were given uniforms, and then ID numbers to use instead of their names. And then the guards, on the other hand, they got uniforms too, but also mirrored sunglasses. And they had these wooden batons to kind of reinforce their authority. The study was supposed to look into the psychological effects of power and being confined, mm -hmm. but um, it took a dark turn pretty quickly. Yeah, almost as soon as it started, the guards started to use their power in ways that became more and more abusive. And the prisoners, you could really see their distress, and they started to rebel. The guards would use punishments like solitary confinement, mm. and they'd restrict the prisoners' bathroom privileges. They made them do humiliating tasks. Some of the guards, they even went as far as using fire extinguishers on the prisoners stripping them naked, hmm. and there was a lot of verbal harassment and degradation. One prisoner who we know is prisoner AT612, he experienced so much emotional distress that they had to let him go after only 36 hours. And another prisoner, prisoner 819, he also had a breakdown, which made it even clearer that the experiment was having a big psychological impact on everyone involved. Even the visitors who came to watch the experiment, they had to deal with the guards controlling behavior which shows just how pervasive the influence of the situation was. There was this visiting psychologist, Christina Maslach, and she was so upset by what she saw that she confronted Dr. Philip Zimbardo, who was the lead researcher. She really questioned the ethics of the whole study. Her outrage, and then concerns from other people too, led to the experiment ending early. After just six days, it was supposed to go on for two weeks. Yeah, the Stanford prison experiment, even though it was controversial, it became a really important study in social psychology. It showed how much situations can influence human behavior. It showed that even normal people, you know, average people, if you put them in a specific environment and give them certain roles, they might do things they would normally think were unethical or even cruel. And that brings us to the idea of the Lucifer effect, a term that Zimbardo came up with. Yeah, the Lucifer effect. It refers to that change in character that happens when regular people do evil things. It's more than just saying good versus evil. It suggests that anyone in the right conditions could go through that kind of transformation. Zabardo says there are three main forces at work in the Lucifer effect. Dispositional, situational, and systemic. So dispositional factors, those are things like an individual's personality traits, what they're already predisposed to. Situational factors are the environment and the specific circumstances that the person is in. And then the systemic factors. Those are the bigger institutions and the power structures that shape the situations people are in. In the Stanford prison experiment, the guards weren't necessarily sadistic people to begin with. They were just regular college students, but they were transformed by the situation. It was the power dynamics of the prison environment, the anonymity they had because of their uniforms and the fact that there wasn't much oversight. All of that contributed to their abusive behavior. It really highlights how strongly situational forces can affect a person's behavior. Sometimes it can even override their morals and values. Zimbardo also talks about the role of dehumanization in the Lucifer effect. And that's really key to understanding how these transformations happen. Dehumanization, it's that process of taking away someone's human qualities making them seem like objects or threats instead of people. And when that happens, it becomes much easier psychologically to mistreat someone or harm them or even kill them. We saw this in the Stanford prison experiment when the guards started calling the prisoners by numbers, making them wear humiliating clothing. 
and just denying them basic dignity. Those actions made the prisoners seem less human in the eyes of the guards, and that made it easier to be abusive. And dehumanization doesn't just happen in experiments, unfortunately. It's been used in real-world atrocities throughout history. Like the Holocaust, where the Nazis used propaganda to portray Jewish people as vermin, or the Rwandan genocide where Tutsis were labeled as cockroaches, these examples show the terrible consequences of dehumanization. The Lucifer effect, as we see in the Stanford Prison Experiment and these historical examples, it's a scary reminder that we all have the potential for evil inside us. It highlights how important it is to understand what contributes to this transformation so we can try to prevent it and create a more humane world. So the Stanford Prison Experiment and these historical examples, they kind of raise a big question, you know? What makes some people able to resist that pull toward the Lucifer effect, even when the pressure from the situation is so strong? Right. It seems like it would be hard to not get swept up in it. It's how do you hold on to your sense of right and wrong when everyone around you is acting so differently? Well, Zimbardo suggests one important factor is being able to think critically and to question authority. People who can step back and analyze the situation instead of just blindly following orders, they're less likely to get caught up in those dynamics that lead to harmful behavior. That makes sense. Like if you can see the bigger picture and not just the immediate situation, mm -hmm. you might be more likely to recognize that something is wrong. Exactly. And another really crucial element is empathy. That ability to understand and share the feelings of other people. You know, when we can see the humanity in everyone around us, even people who are different from us or who we might see as enemies, it's much harder to dehumanize them, to justify treating them badly. Like you have to remember that everyone is a person with their own thoughts and feelings and experiences. Right. And Zimbardo also talks about having a strong moral compass, a set of values that guide your actions even when there's pressure to do something different. People with a strong moral compass they're more likely to know when a situation is becoming toxic mm -hmm. and they'll have the courage to resist doing anything harmful. So it's about having that inner voice that tells you what's right and wrong, even when everyone else seems to be ignoring it. That's it. And those are often the people who become whistleblowers. They speak out against injustice and they challenge systems that are causing harm, even when it puts them at risk. Yeah, those are the people who really stand up for what they believe in, even when it's hard. Resisting the Lucifer effect. It's not easy. It takes a lot of courage and being self-aware and a willingness to fight for what's right even when it's not popular. It sounds like it takes a certain kind of strength to be able to go against the grain like that. It does. But the good news is that by understanding what's happening psychologically, we can help ourselves and other people to make better choices, even in tough situations. So knowledge is power in a way. If we know how these things work, we can be more prepared to resist them. Exactly. Okay, so now let's shift gears a little bit and look at a real-world event that's disturbingly similar to the Stanford Prison Experiment. The abuses that happened at Abu Ghraib Prison in Iraq in 2003. Oh yeah, Abu Ghraib. That was a huge scandal. I remember when the photos and videos came out showing American soldiers torturing Iraqi detainees. It was shocking. It was. The images were horrifying. Prisoners were stripped naked, forced into painful positions, threatened with dogs, and there was just so much humiliation and degradation. And there were reports of sexual abuse, too. Sleep deprivation beatings. Yeah. It was a really grim picture of what was going on in that prison. It was. And Zimbardo, drawing on his experience with the Stanford prison experiment, he saw a lot of parallels between the two situations. He said the factors at play in both cases were really similar. So you had that prison environment, the power difference between the guards and the prisoners, the dehumanization of the detainees and the lack of oversight. It all contributed to this culture of abuse. Exactly. And Zimbardo was actually an expert witness in the court-martial of one of the Abu Ghraib guards, Staff Sergeant Ivan Chip Frederick. Zimbardo talked about the psychology of how even seemingly ordinary people can end up committing these acts of cruelty. It's like the situation itself can kind of bring out the worst in people. That's what it seems like. The Abu Ghraib scandal, just like the Stanford prison experiment, it shows us that evil isn't just limited to a few bad people. It's something that exists in all of us to some degree. And certain situations can make us more vulnerable to it. So it's not just about blaming individuals. We have to look at the systems and the environments that make this kind of behavior possible. Yeah, and we need to create systems that prevent abuse, that encourage people to act ethically, and that hold people accountable for their actions. 
So the lessons we're learning from the Stanford prison experiment and the Lucifer effect and real world events like Abu Ghraib, it's not about despair. It's about empowerment. Exactly. By understanding what contributes to evil, we can try to create environments that foster compassion and empathy and ethical behavior. And we can also develop those skills in ourselves. Yeah. You know, critical thinking, moral courage, personal responsibility, those things that help us resist negative influences. Right, because ultimately we all have a role to play in creating a more humane world. The Stanford Prison Experiment and the Lucifer Effect, they're not just academic ideas, they're forces that are at work in our lives every day, shaping how we act and how we interact with the world around us. It really is fascinating. Uh, but also unsettling. When you think about how easily we can be influenced by these situations. Yeah, it makes you think about what you believe about good and evil. Yeah. And what you yourself might do if you were in a certain situation. Yeah, totally. The Stanford prison experiment and the Lucifer effect, they kind of blow up that idea that evil is only in certain people. You know, like some people are just born bad. Right, it's not that simple. It's saying that anyone could potentially become evil, depending on what's happening around them. Exactly. And that's why it's so important for us to be aware of those factors, you know, the mm. conditions that can lead to evil. So that maybe we can create environments where it's less likely to happen. Right. We need to build systems that support ethical behavior, that encourage people to have empathy for each other, and that make it harder to dehumanize others. Which means we have to think critically about how power works, about the ways we label and categorize people, and the messages we send about who deserve compassion and who doesn't. Yeah, it's a big challenge, but I think it's essential if we want to make the world a better place, more just more humane. Well said. This has been a really thought-provoking deep dive, looking at the dark side of human nature and how we all have the capacity for both good and evil. I think the main takeaway is that we can't just ignore the fact that evil exists. But we shouldn't give up hope either. Yeah. We're also capable of doing a lot of good. Yeah. And understanding these psychological forces can help us create a world where that good can actually happen. That's a good point. Thanks for joining us on this journey. It's been quite a ride.